altar. Save us from wandering of mind, from hardness. Open us to the life-giving mystery you wish us to behold. Amen. Our opening hymn of praise follows our choral and Troy. Hymn 637.
Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your Holy Spirit through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. People may be seated for the reading of Scripture. A reading from the book of Jeremiah. Am I a God nearby, says the Lord, and not a God far off? Who can hide in secret places so that I cannot see him, says the Lord? Do I not fill heaven and earth, says the Lord? I have heard what the prophets have said, who prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long? Will the hearts of the prophets ever turn back? Those who prophesy lies and who prophesy the deceit of their own heart? They plan to make my people forget my name by their dreams that they tell one another, just as their ancestors forgot my name for Baal. Let the the prophet who has a dream tell the dream, but let the one who has my word speak my word faithfully. What has straw in common with wheat, says the Lord, is not my word like fire, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks a rock in pieces? The word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. Let us say together Psalm 82 on page 705. God takes his stand in the council of heaven. He gives judgment in the midst of all the gods. How long will you judge unjustly and show favor to the wicked? Save the weak and the orphan. 
defend the humble and needy, rescue the weak and the poor, deliver them from the power of the wicked. They do not know, neither do they understand. They go about in darkness. All foundations of the earth are shaken. Now I say to you, you are gods and all of your children of the Most High. Nevertheless, you shall die like mortals and fall like any prince. Arise, O God, and rule the earth, for you shall take all nations for your own. A reading from Paul's letter to the Hebrews. By faith, the people passed through the Red Sea as if it were dry land. But when the Egyptians attempted to do so, they were drowned. By faith, the walls of Jericho fell after they had been encircled for seven days. By faith, Rahab the prostitute did not perish with those who were disobedient because she had received the spies in peace. And what more should I say, for time would fail me to tell of Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, of David and Samuel and the prophets, who through faith conquered kingdoms, administered justice, obtained promises, shut the mouths of lions, quenched raging fire, escaped the edge of the sword, one strength out of weakness, became mighty in war, put foreign armies to flight. Women received their dead by resurrection. Others were tortured, refusing to accept release in order to obtain a better resurrection. Others suffered mocking and flogging and even chains and imprisonment. They were stoned to death. They were sawn in two. They were killed by the sword. They went about in skins of sheep and goats, destitute, persecuted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and mountains and in caves and holes in the ground. Yet all these, though they were commended for their faith, did not receive what was promised, since God had provided something better so that they would not, apart from us, be made perfect. Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and the sin that clings so closely, and let us run with perseverance the race that is set before us, looking to Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith, who for the sake of the joy that was set before him endured the cross, disregarding its shame, and has taken his seat at the right hand of the throne of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said, I came to bring fire to the earth, and how I wish it were already kindled. I have a baptism with which to be baptized, and what stress I am under until it is completed. Do you think that I have come to bring peace to the earth? No, I tell you, but rather division. From now on, five in one household will be divided, three against two, and two against three. They will be divided. Father against son, and son against father, mother against daughter, and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law, and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He also said to the crowds, when you see a cloud rising in the west, you immediately say, it is going to rain, and so it happens. And when you see the south wind blowing, you say, there will be a scorching heat, and it happens. You hypocrites, you know how to interpret the appearance of earth and sky, but why do you not know how to interpret the present time? The Gospel of the Lord. of our hearts be always acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You know, I just got to tell you, if you were with me in Africa and we sang that song and you weren't dancing and if everyone wasn't clapping, then they would call out the priest and the doctor because they would assume you were dead. <laughs> Is there any doubt we live in turbulent times? Yeah, maybe. But there can be no doubt that our democracy is stressed. We take our great experiment in democracy for granted. I have always believed that civilizations are largely veneers. They're dominated either by a collective social contract built on a respect for law or an imposed order built on brute force. Then you get flashes of populist uprisings that reshuffle the deck and guide you back towards either a theocracy, an autocracy, or a democracy. But they are very dangerous in the short term and rarely work out well for the citizenry. Russia's October Revolution gave us Lenin, then Stalin, and 30 million 
Russian civilians killed by the state. My litmus test in evaluating today's politicians is simple. Do their actions strengthen or weaken our social contract and the institutions which protect our social contract? I want national leaders who promote peace and tranquility, who strive for mercy and justice, who can reach beyond our specific society to other countries to promote alliances and trade that will enhance our collective security. In good times, we make choices between leaders of political parties, any of whom would pass my litmus test. You may bicker about their policies, but the basic litmus test gets passed. In turbulent times, some of the leaders are addicted to raw power, and then our republic faces serious risk of devolution. When this is the case, we say that a person lacks the temperament to be a national leader. So, turbulent times, indeed. Uh, but don't think that we're the only ones. Our Lord lived in an incredibly complicated, oppressive society. The Romans ruled, but the Jews had a fair degree of autonomy within their own affairs. Judaism was a theocratic collection of large clans with tough, religious-based rules controlling every aspect of life. But first century Palestine was also richly blessed by a prophetic tradition and a redactive tradition which promoted self-examination and expression. There was a great tradition that I so much value of rabbis who would travel in pairs, rabbis from opposing schools of thought, and together they would teach Torah at the same time. They represented their divergent schools of thoughts, but they were honored as good and faithful Jews. Still, overall, Jesus lived in turbulent times when competing power centers vied for religious and political control. Jesus knows that his call to serve God is a threat to those power centers and therefore a threat to the Romans who demand adherence to Roman law. First century Jews knew as well as anyone in the world that Pax Romana was enforced by the tip of a spear. Into this stew of oppression and yearning for independence, Jesus becomes many things to many people, but for most, he is a disruptive force, a prophet and miracle worker loved by the throngs and despised by many Jewish leaders and religious conservatives. They see no good coming from this Galilean who taunts the Torah in the name of God's service. They see Jesus' itinerant preaching leading to one of two bad outcomes. Either, one, the religious authorities will be undermined, or two, the Romans will see Jesus as an insurrectionist and they will take him down and bring with him a lot of the religious leaders. In today's Gospel, Jesus gives perhaps his harshest words about his ministry's impact within Israel. Do you think that I have come to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. For henceforth in one house there will be five divided, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. This is no meek and mild Jesus. 
calling the children forward to be blessed. And there's not a hint of joy in the tone of his statement. What are we to make of these words? Is Jesus describing the inevitable result of following him, or is he prescribing a new social contract in which honoring one's father and mother is a lesser demand to the imperative, come and follow me? I believe that Jesus is calling us to reprioritize our relationships around God's kingdom around the prophetic call to do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with our God. Christians, followers of Jesus, are not to rely on our ancestry, our bloodline, to define our covenant with God. That's what's behind the troubling adage, God has no grandchildren. Chew on that one while you drive home today. Okay, maybe a few grandchildren. <laughs> maybe we could get that door. There you go, be bold, take initiative. God has no grandchildren. We must each accept the invitation, come. And then we must follow, even if that means radically altering our familial relationships. I believe this to my core. It is my baptismal covenant which marks who I am and how I am to journey in this life. Nevertheless, I am profoundly committed and intertwined with my family, my wife, my adult children, their spouses who are as much my family as my children, my brothers, nieces, nephews, cousins, and yes, I include the family dog. She's been here 13 years. I love them all. And spend, frankly, the vast majority of my waking time with them, including, oh, including uh, pancakes in between service today with the grandson and with a different pair tonight at 4 o'clock for barbecue and Pismo. Come on over. But when God calls, I must answer this, even if it means standing aside from those I love. It's so very easy to get compromised and consumed by family demands that we do not take time to climb the hill in order to listen for the still, small voice. Not everyone in my family shares my articles of belief. Some are more devout than I, others less. But what my family does do is allow space for encountering God and being led, even if it leads to scratching one's head. I've lived the tension of being a priest and having a broad family. And heaven knows my family has endured the tension of having a priest in the family. But honestly, it is a tension all families have if they are populated by Christians. We follow Christ first. We hope that this will bear good fruit in all of our relationships. But sometimes, in some families, following Christ leads to scorn and division. Christians must never play the part of the victim nor are we more favored than anyone else by God. Our sole claim is that we belong to God 
by virtue of the water in which we have been baptized. It gets challenging. You do not have to have discernment of the Holy Spirit to choose right from wrong. Thomas Aquinas teaches us that you can simply use your, your reason. That will get you through that. The task is when you have two goods to choose from. What is your choice then, and how do you discern God's will in that? So I was on the golf course with my son, and uh, we saw some guy in a SC shirt, and that led to a, boy, I would really love for my children to go to uh, maybe UCLA, or maybe UC Santa Barbara, or maybe, 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 and I'm seeing dollar sign, dollar sign, dollar sign knowing that what had been done for us, we had to kind of try to do for others. Um, but I also saw water well, water well, water well, as the cost of four grandchildren in 10 to 15 years going through four years of university by any standard could easily exceed one million dollars. That's a lot of water wells. How do you make your choices? How do you discern? If we follow Jesus, we might have a different calculus than if our faith is not a part of it. Because when we follow Jesus, we are told to love justice, love mercy, to walk humbly with our God, to take care of the widows and orphans. Those are not obligations that we individually have. Otherwise, they come by virtue of our faith. <clears throat> so it's a challenge, and I want it to be a challenge. And Jesus is telling you, it will be divisive for you to work this out. Some of you folks and your families are just going to want to be all self-absorbed. And Jesus is going to say, no, you've got to turn yourself inside out and go into the world. You are God's hands and feet. Well, you've heard many times that blood is thicker than water. But I tell you, this is not so, at least not when it comes to the water of baptism and that viscousy chrism with which we are sealed by the Holy Spirit. Jesus said, I have a baptism to be baptized with, and how I am constrained until it is accomplished. This reference to his death on Calgary has indeed been accomplished. Our Lord is no longer constrained. Let us align our lives in this freedom and love those whom God has given to us without constraint. I tell you, this is the perfect and the only antidote we can affect in today's turbulent times. Amen.
please stand as you are able and turn to page 358 in the Red Book of Common Prayer. And in the tradition of our church, let us say together the statement of Christian faith through the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. Of all that is seen and unseen, we believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, life from life, true God from true God, begotten and not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. In accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of the people are form one, which is found on page 383. And if you are joining us on Facebook Live, please put your own intercessions and thanksgivings in the comments section. With all our heart and with all our mind, let us pray to the Lord, saying, Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our Bishop, Lucinda, and for all the clergy and people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For our President, for the leaders of the nations, and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. For this city, Arroyo Grande, and for every city and community, and for those who live in them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For those in Ukraine who are in the midst of war, and for those who have fled the terrors, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the good earth which God has given us, and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, let us pray to the Lord. For the diverse and vibrant native communities who make their home here and across these lands, for all native peoples on whose ancestral homelands we are worshiping this morning, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and suffering, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Within our own community, we continue to pray for Bobby, Cara Lopez, Gladys Johnson, Nicholas, Barbara, the Olson family, Marino, Luis, Lindsay, Carl Hunter, Stan Martin, Wayne Stipp, Peter, Tim, Janet, Rob, and Josh Mann, and repose of soul for Tony Dow, Snooks, Cody White, and Dave Tui. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. For all who have died in the hope of the resurrection, and for all the departed, let us pray to the Lord. Lord have mercy. Lord, have mercy. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, 
Let us pray to the Lord. Lord have us that we may end our lives in faith and hope, without suffering and without reproach. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. And from the bidding book, I bid your prayers for Joan Sampson for Repose of Soul, Miranda and Jeremy Thompson, Thanksgiving for 16th wedding anniversary. A, a repose of soul for Olivia Newton-John. Healing for Salmon Rusty. Healing for our rector, Rob Kine. Healing for David M. Healing for Jack Tarr. Healing for Shirley H. Healing for Marsha Bolnatz. Healing for Debbie, healing for Ann Lindley and her family and comfort for the death of his son, healing for Kirby and Joe, and from Facebook Live. Bid your prayers of healing for Lois. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord have mercy. Gracious God, you are always more ready to hear us than we are to pray, and you give us more than we either desire or deserve. May we remember that all our gifts, abilities, and life come from you, and grant that we may use them to your glory and for the benefit of others. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now turning back to page 360, let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you. sins through our Lord Jesus Christ confirm and strengthen you and all goodness by the power of the Holy Spirit keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Please extend the greetings. Peace. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Canon Doug Edwards, and it is a pleasure to be back with you as uh, Father Rob recuperates. I spoke with him yesterday, and he's quite hopeful. He thinks his hearing is already improving, even through all the packing. So as long as we force him to uh, not lift up weights over 15 pounds and take care of himself during his recuperation, there might be good things in store for him. Let's hope so. Thank you. Good morning. Uh, I'm Steve Jerry from Vestry on call today, and I have a couple of announcements. Uh, you will see in uh, your bulletin that the choir, after two years, is going to resume, and rehearsals are going to be in the first week of September. So if you're interested in being part of the uh, choir, please contact Janice Johnson. So we're all very excited about that. Um, I'd like to thank uh, Sheila and Jim Miller for hosting the social today, and I would hope that you all would consider hosting one of the socials in the future here, as everyone uh, seems to uh, really enjoy it. 
Uh, we're very excited that the St. Barnabas Thrift Shop is celebrating its first anniversary, and um, the location has been very, very uh, good for sales, and we're currently on track to double the sales that were made in the year 2019. So to celebrate the success, the shop is going to have a buy one, get one free sale starting on the 18th, Thursday, from 10 o'clock till four. So Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, buy one, get one free. And we hope you encourage any of your friends, neighbors, to please come and purchase some things. There's so many good ministries that are funded by the thrift shop. Thank you. Do we have any birthdays and anniversaries to celebrate? Call it out, please. My sister Lynn. Your sister? Her birthday. Thank you. My great-granddaughter, Olivia. Your great-granddaughter, her birthday? Is it her, we're celebrating her birthday? Yes. Lovely. Happy birthday to Joseph Long. Happy birthday to Joseph Long. Um, I was going to say that too. Anyway, <laughs> um, happy birthday to um, Donna and to um, Little Karen. Okay, Donna and Little Karen. Happy birthday to my brother Drew. To your brother Drew. Okay. Happy anniversary to Jen and Lisa. Jen and Lisa. It's your great granddaughter's birthday. Lovely. And her name? Lydia. Lovely. Well, then I'll just add one more. Tomorrow is the feast day of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and so uh, it's a day that I find precious and special and celebrate really all of uh, all the sacrifices of motherhood and being called. Let us uh, offer up these prayers using our birthday and anniversary prayers. Gracious God, you made us in your own image. We thank you for your life, love, and joy. Send your blessing upon these, your children, who have completed another year. Surround them with your grace, fill them with your love, and strengthen them to be your servants in the world. This we ask through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We thank you, Lord, gracious God, for the love you have implanted in the hearts of your servants and for your continued blessings on them. Give them kind and loving hearts, always ready for forgiveness as well as to forgive. Support them through times of trial. Strengthen their love for one another and may that love empower them to be instruments of God's love in the world. This we ask through your Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. And now let us present our offerings of thanks and praise unto the Lord.
of one faith and giving to your church the power to serve you as a royal priesthood and to preach the gospel to all nations. Therefore we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name.
us for yourself. And when we had fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you in your mercy sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension. We offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father now and forever. Amen. Now as our Savior Christ taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, as we forgive those who trespass against us, lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. My flesh is food indeed, and my blood. Receive them in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. The body of Christ, the bread of God.
you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace, 
and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. The blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you this day and forevermore. Amen. Thank you. Relying on our Lord Jesus to help us discern God's call, let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen.